support. Welcome back to the Guardian with Join Holly radio show. Thank you for hanging out with us today. you got a question, time for question and answer. Our questions, your answers, you can send that over to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com or you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stockpot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stockpot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. Number again, 1-800-927-7469. 1-800-927-SHOW. Garden Talk Radio at gmail.com is the email address. Holly, this question is sponsored by Fleet Farm and FleetFarm.com and goes as followed. Can you take seeds from green tomatoes and save them? Well, if the tomatoes don't ripen, you can 100% say you can can't be 100 percent sure the seeds are viable so they could work you can probably get some viable seeds when you look at the seeds you can tell if they're more developed and healthier they tend to look a little bit plumper if they look kind of flat then probably not um it's best to leave them on the vine or bring them in to allow them to ripen before saving seeds now uh, this goes with a asterisk next to it some tomatoes don't change colors there are number of tomato varieties that are like mr stripey right? uh, zebra, uh, uh, zebra there's a granny grandma something yeah. it's like a sausage tomato that's got but uh, there's that one yeah green zebra green zebra that's what it there is. are several varieties that are big beefsteak that do not change when they're ripe they are a different shade of green so if you've got 87 and, and a third different varieties in your garden you kind of want to know what you got because if you continue to wait for that green zebra to change the red you're going to wait forever because it's not going to happen. But if you're going to save seeds, like Holly talked about, in any form or fashion, the most mature of the fruit will contain the best opportunity for the best traits and the best mature seeds to get you a best germination the next coming year. Absolutely. So we have a question about the boysenberry plant. Yeah. What type of soil should you use if it's going to be in a permanent pot or container well anything that's in a pot or a container first of all organic rich well-draining soil with a ph about six to seven this being said if it's in a container you're going to have to supplement or feed that plant nutrients whether organic or inorganic fertilizer and more compost yearly in order to sustain the life of that that plant or and or you may have to work itself up to larger containers, whether that's root maker grow bags. They have one to 60 gallon. They even got a hundred gallon grow bag now. Use coupon code uh, radio 22 to save 10, 15% on your order at rootmaker.com. Uh, yeah, radio 22 to save 15%. And you can get your grow bags. They have nice white sided grow bags, very blends in real nice with the house if you got a white house they've got some other colors there but you're going to have to continue to feed that plant it it if it's in the ground if it's in a traditional garden ground and you neglect it there is enough nutrients and enough stuff going on in the soil that it's probably going to survive it's not going to be happy but it will survive in a container no matter what size it's going to dry out quicker and this is for any plant going to dry out quicker going to use the nutrients up as it rains, as it wa- as you water, nutrient is going to flush out of the soil and uh, out of the containers. So you're going to have to have this constant battle of keeping up with the plant, regardless of what you got there, whether it's zinnias, whether it's a tree, whether it's whatever it is in a container. So that's your container 101, and, and very quickly. Uh, keep up with the plant. You're going to have to keep feeding it. You're going to have to keep taking care of it. All right, we got a question about dog vomit mold, and this comes uh, okay. up a lot. It looks like dog vomit it looks like a giant uh multicolored f- fuzzy mushroom right yeah. exactly um and should i remove it can i when i see it in my garden is it okay what should i do um it will go away on its own after a few days yes. it'll kind of 
deflate essentially or I don't know, biodegrade. Correct. If you have pets or children that might eat the dog vomit mold, don't let them eat it. You could flake it off. Usually it grows like on the side of things sometimes. Uh, well, on, on the side of plants, yeah. wood chips is a, a, a feeding uh, mechanism for it. We've had it just in traditional I think, ground because yeah. it, it, the sign is that you got good nutrient in soil right. in that area. So you can let it do its thing or if you're afraid that your curious pet or child might try to eat it i wouldn't touch I it i wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it i would just, I just cage it off yeah cage it off yeah keep it yeah but put a, put but, a box over it but again you're looking at th- three days top some people you know it, it was there this morning it's gone because it just that's how it goes it's it's alive it's a living thing it doesn't walk off it's not like that but you you get the idea you, you see what we're saying there all right uh, a couple of weeks ago well more like you know five six weeks ago we had steve bender on. He was he is the editor of Southern Living Magazine, and he said that Epsom salt people will create this weed killer with Epsom salt, soap, and vinegar as a weed killer, and it does not work. And he explained why in about two minutes. Uh, essentially, the Epsom salt is a fertilizer, magnesium sulfate. You're feeding the, the the weeds that you're trying to kill. Soap is just a mechanism for the uh, Epsom salt and the vinegar to stick to the plant. And the vinegar in which many of these people are using is store-grade vinegar, which is 5% acidity. doesn't have the punch that it needs to in order to kill the weeds. So the question is, then what do I use? And the answer to that is a horticultural grade vinegar. And this can be a 20 to a 30% vinegar, uh, it's vinegar. Acidity. Acidity, yeah. Yeah, so store-bought vinegar, like typical white vinegar, is 5% acidity. If you're lucky. Yeah, no, it's 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 a standard 5. Yeah. But you got to, that's not going to do anything. The the weeds just laugh at you at that point. Right, so this is a horticultural Gray vinegar, as Joey said, 20, 30 percent. It's got a it's got a lot of acidity. And and you can get it at natgreenproducts.com. Use coupon code GreenThumb10 to get 10 percent off your purchase of any. Uh, no, uh, no, that's uh, that's for no more bugs. You can use that as well uh, for keeping the bugs away in your yard uh, and off you. You can use code WEEDS, W-E-E-D-S, and buy three one-gallon units and get the fourth one free by using weeds at natgreenproducts.com. That they have horticultural grade uh, vinegar. They want it, it's a strong organic vin- uh, weed killer uh, that will kill your weeds. Now, uh, good question there. And uh, let's see here. I am going to get my tires replaced uh, on my car and was thinking about using the old ones as grow beds and starting plants in them next spring. What is your thoughts? Well, you can use you can use the tires as grow beds, but not for anything that's edible. So a lot of times you'll see these things on on Pinterest or now on social media where they're painted like i don't know ladybugs or yeah. cute things or whatever designs you lay the tires out to make it look like a flower and yeah you can plant in them but i would not plant edible things in them now you could also uh-huh. take um put them on their side if you like the look of that that tire situation want to paint them you know do that and then put like a terracotta pot right in the middle if you want to grow you want to grow some. I remember growing up, and it wasn't like a lot of them, but like four or five uh, uh, wheels or tires, we would start tomatoes in them because it would warm the soil up much more rapidly than in the ground. Now, I, I don't remember if it was, you know, we got tomatoes three weeks early or anything like that, but I do remember uh, that tomatoes were being grown in rubber tires now there's that explains a lot now there's no obviously tires are full of chemicals we know this and from what i have found and somebody can correct me there has not been a hardcore study going well after x amount of years of soil contact a certain percentage of toxicity or carcinogens leak from the tire into the soil and if you got this plant growing there it'll suck it up and then you're going to eat the fruit off i don't know if there's any been in any studies to that extreme but to the common sense of uh, uh somebody who is going to eat what you grow the, it doesn't make sense to grow something in a container that is known to have multiple levels of chemicals in it, such as a tire, because a tire has got well, dozens of chemicals in order to make, it's not just oil and, and rubber. 
Right. And the thing is, is that also it's most car tires are not going, it might be deep enough to grow vegetables, but maybe not. And I just don't, I wouldn't take the chance. Grow flowers or sunflowers. Yeah, or... And also they, they kind of take up not a lot of space, but they could be awkward to, to lay out. Right. And, not square tires. Not they don't. Square, yeah. they, they don't. They don't stack very <laughs> well. Square. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I would just err on the side of caution and only grow flowers or something you're not going to eat. But that's just me. Again, there's no scientific study that says that you the tires are leaching chemicals into your food. But I just feel like you know common sense not to do it. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.